All right, hello everyone. So today what I want to do is uh, talk to you all about some different forms of geometry in Rhino that you can play with. Um, and we're just going to use the owl for the example. So we had you model the owl using what we call NURBS, which are precise uh, planes and forms that are uh, dictated by geometry and sections and um, you know arcs and all that kind of stuff, which is basic CAD, SolidWorks, um, Fusion 360 kind of modeling. In modeling engines similar to Blender, um, they use a mesh-based system with quad, uh, with quad sides, so four sides to different faces, and you manipulate the faces. And so you can actually um, go ahead and create a new one, and we're going to do what we call a sub D. And so up here on the top, we've got sub D tools. Now I'm just going to show you another way we could have made the owl body. Now the feet, we could have made this way too. Probably would have been a lot easier actually to make the feet the way that we're going to demonstrate right now. Uh, but things like the eyes, the, uh, the, the kind of chest cutout area here, all of those areas are really better for nerves. So let's go ahead and, and show you a basic demonstration of how we could do the owl. So I'm going to create first a mesh sphere. And now you remember that we had to add control points and manipulate the size of the object. So um, we can create subdivisions, style quads, yes, subdivisions we're going to do, let's see, maybe 40. Hmm. Okay, fine, eight. All right, so this is a, a sphere now that is uh, based off of what we call sub Ds. It's a mesh. So you can actually come through and grab these faces, very similar to what we did before, but there's more control and power that you can actually employ on these faces as you manipulate them. So let's go ahead and show you the difference here. If I click on this, I can actually change the shape of it to a, I don't know, disco ball or something <laughs> um, based off of our forms here. Let me the center. Okay. So that's it. another thing I just did. So if I hit Z, enter for zoom, enter, S, enter, and I have something selected, now it changes my orbit orientation to orbit only around the object that's selected. I can even do that like with just the eye. Makes it really easy for um, moving the, through the space. It's an important thing to know that people just ignore and end up being frustrated. So zoom selected. So you've got all these faces on here and you can grab the faces and you can pull and push and move in this form and then change it back to this form. Also you can subdivide them to make more spaces and that's one of these tools right here where we've got, let's see, subdivide, boom. So that adds more faces to it. And then you can even select just a face by using sub object select which is command shift click with a Mac or control shift click with the PC. Command shift click with the Mac or control shift click with the PC. Or you can select face filtering. And this is a really nice thing that pops up here too. So I have right now just sub D faces selected. And so I can actually just select away by clicking and then shift click to add to the selection. And then I can move things around. And usually when I'm working with meshes, I disable all of my uh, snaps because you really don't need snaps very much on meshes. It's a little bit more free form like sculpting. Uh, but also you can change this and I can go to vertices here, right? Points or vertices. And I can only grab vertices. And I can do my left to right selection to grab all those top vertices without grabbing the other ones. Or right to left to select all of them that go all the way around. And you can do fun things like, you know, pull at the uh, gumball in different directions. Or you can grab a face, which is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to 
subdivide the face. Oh, actually first, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up symmetry. So this is another really cool thing um, for making symmetrical objects. All right, so what I wanna do next is I wanna set this up so that it is um, reflected on both sides, the moves that I make. So let's go ahead and do that. So the command is gonna be called reflect, enter. Select the sub D to reflect, and then I'm gonna use this point on that kind of middle section there um, to create the, the, the divider line. You can see that middle line right there. And then I'm gonna just click a point on the side I wanna keep, and then hit enter, and it should make a red line that goes all the way around my object. Now, whatever I do to one side, it will do to the other, making it really easy to shape this body. So let's go ahead and start by making the ears. If I turn my face, surfaces, boom, 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 boom. Oops, not surfaces, sub D. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. Let's turn sub D, select sub D objects. Where is it? Select face loop. Ah, right here. Select filter faces. There we go. So then I can select this and these two faces, and I can subdivide those to make more. All right. Like that. You can even do it again if I wanted to make even more. And then I can come in here and pull these shapes up. I can come to the side shapes here and kind of manipulate it out a little bit. And now I'm making it more like bunny ears <laughs> or Mickey Mouse ears. Um, but if you come back to this state here and you can see how the subdivision broke right there. You can create, um, turn this off, disable. Control shift or command shift, click should be a light. Subobjects selected for there. And I crease these. Then, if I select these uh, faces here and subdivide them, they'll do something different. So, just kind of knowing how the object's going to move when you when you subdivide or change edge loops and stuff. That's really helpful. Another thing we can do here, instead of subdividing, is you can actually add edge loops. So if I click on this, uh, control shift click, disable, control shift click on, disable, this, and this, and then I can come up here and I can create an edge loop. So, or that one's to move the edge loop, sorry. Um, Where is it? Right here. You can see I can create a little edge loop in there. And then if I wanted to, I can even come in here and select just this one and do that same command and create another little edge loop right there. And then I can delete them by control shift deleting will change the shapes of things too and then I think I'm gonna just if you delete it all together you'll create a hole <laughs> edges get rid of the edges the holes get rid of the holes so you can edit the shapes of these pretty drastically but I'm just gonna um, change the whole edge loop here so if I control shift and double click it goes all the way around the whole thing. And then I can create another edge loop 
right next to it. And the more edge loops you put in, the kind of sharper it is too. And if I hit tab, I can kind of change it to this looking so I can understand how it's smoothing a little bit better. Select faces and pull them up. There we go. <laughs> and then tab to make it smooth again. And you can do things like scale them in. I gotta turn off my grid snap, it's really messing me up. Let's see, grid snap off. There we go. And then I can select the whole thing. And I can even do things like, if I wanted to crease this top edge, grab just the top edge, or what, over there, I'm sorry. On my mirror side, and I can crease it, make the ears a little bit pointy. So, that's a really powerful tool, and there's a lot of um, tutorial videos online about it too. And then, Stop, reflect. Remove existing symmetry, there it is. Okay, so I just, to get rid of that, I hit reflect, select the object, and then remove existing symmetry will be up there. Okay, so that's that. The nice thing about this is if you build a mesh like this, right, if I exported this into something like Blender, it would preserve all of the uh, quads on this and I can edit it in Blender and sculpt on it in Blender and maintain the shape here. Uh, because the way this modeling software works is in order to cut down on the amount of um, detailed sections, it uses smoothing factors. And that's the same thing that Blender uses and the same thing that um, Unreal Engine uses. So really powerful stuff. And really cool to even use planes to kind of build things. So if I bring this in here, the tab. Now let's do it smaller. Okay, I'm gonna do a single X count, enter, and a single Y count. So when I bring this in, it's just a flat plane like this. This is really cool because you can um, sub objects select control shift uh, uh, click or command shift click and then this little ball here you can bring out another section right which is really cool because then I can even bring it up you know and you can build like Legos so the ball does what we call extrude okay so if you had like an image in here that you that you that you brought in using what we call picture frame, um, you can bring in any image. Like let's go to the internet and maybe look up. Uh, Chanel number no. five or something. So if I wanted to make this bottle shape for my packaging design, which you can't do, but I can save image to downloads and let's just save it to the desktop, JPEG image, okay, minimize and then go to my desktop and date. This one open and draw the shape out here. If I had a side view and a front view and all the other views, I could do something really dynamic and lay my sub D um, shapes down here and then just start to build off of each other this way. So if I select sub D, oh, I'm gonna lock this surface down so I don't mess with it. That's the other thing, if you lock that, now it won't interact when I click on it. It's just using the command lock. Right. 
happen right now. And there's a lot of information to, to go on for sub-Ds. So I'm just going to kind of call it there. This is a brief introduction to sub-Ds.